Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Mohamed Kantawi and I am a university teacher. In today's session, we shall be talking about linguistics. I shall be talking about general linguistics. Uh, and I think in, 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 in a previous video, we defined uh, linguistics, the definition of linguistics, you know, the, the scientific study of language or of human language. In today's session, we shall be talking about European structuralism. And as you can notice, the figure in European structuralism is Ferdinand de Saussure or de Saussure. Uh, you know, French. This Ferdinand de Saussure is considered the father, the father of modern linguistics. We shall be talking about the definition of uh, language according to de Saussure and also about the dichotomies, um, about the dichotomies which can be used um, in analyzing and interpreting and, uh, and investigating language. Now, you can notice that for de Saussure, language is a system of signs. And you can notice that the word, you know, signs is taken from um, those stuff that we see in life, um, in the science of, of semiotics, or semiotics, or semiology, as he called it. And so, semiology or semiotics is the science of signs. And you can notice that the word, you know, sign, the word sign, has these two, the signifier and the signified. The signifier has got to do, and this is the first dichotomy um, in investigating or analyzing language. The signifier has to do with the words that we use to indicate objects in reality, or to indicate um, some stuff which are abstract, like for example, love, like hatred. Now, for example, if we have for example, the word table. Now, my sounding the word table, when I say table, in those phonemes, you know, pronunciation, and ta table, when I write it in graphemes, this is a signifier to relate to a signified a reality, which is the object itself, the table itself. The object itself is called the signified. And this is the, the, the first dichotomy, signifier and signified. And this is the sign, has, the, you know, has these two, signifier and signified. The signifier, you know, the word uttered or the word written, and the signified, the object, a reality. And we give the example of table. Um, there's an idea about the signifier and the signified. There's, the, some people, some scientists, believe that the relationship between signify and signified is arbitrary. Uh, they would tell you that there is no relationship whatsoever between the sound or the sounds, the phonemes table, and the object in reality. For some of them, it's true. But there is no um, relationship between signify and signified. But personally, that's my, 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 my own personal opinion. I do not agree. I, I, I believe that there is a relationship between signifier and signified. It is simply that we don't know what that relationship is. The second dichotomy is long and parallel. Long and parallel. Long for dissociere um, is the system in the head of the native speaker. As it is, you know, as a counterpart to competence in the Chomsky uh, rubric or the Chomsky, Chomsky ideas, ideas or ideations. Now you can notice that the word long, it has got to do, it is something that is social in society. It means long cannot be fully complete in, in the head of one individual. It is complete in the community. Unlike parole, parole has got to do with the speech outside. The, when the realization of long in reality is parallel. And so, dissociate, he would choose long to parallel. He would prefer long to parallel 
in the investigation and the analysis of language. Why? Because long is locked in the head of, of, of the speaker and it is pure. It, it's not erroneous. It doesn't have any kind of defects or flaws. Unlike parol, which is speech outside, which has got some idiosyncrasies, flaws and defects and errors even. And so for Dissusia, it is to choose long if you would like to analyze critically and objectively language. <clears throat> the third dichotomy about the four dichotomies of Dissusia is um, paradigmatic and syntagmatic. Paradigmatic and syntagmatic. Now you can notice that the word in a syntagmatic is the study of the relationship between the words of a sentence or a phrase or a clause in a linear way, in, in, in a horizontal way. Let's take an example. I am a teacher. Now this sentence, I am a teacher, can be studied syntagmatically. How syntagmatically? I try to note that there is a relationship between I and am and a teacher. And it, this kind of relationship is logical. You can notice that I, when I say I, I am a human being. And a human being can be a teacher, can be a doctor, can be anything, any kind of job. And so the relationship between I and am and a teacher, philosophically, it's feasible. It's something that is uh, conceivable, that is believable. I am a teacher. That's philosophically. But in terms of the grammar, you can notice that I said I, and no doubt if I want to use verb to be in the present, I should use am. And then a teacher as a complement. What kind of complement? This complement refers to, to I. And so the, the studying of the relationship between I and am and a teacher is called the syntam, or the syntagmatic relationship. Um, if we would like to study language paradigmatically, we should look at this sentence, I am a teacher, and we try to, to know what are the words that can replace them, that can replace I, can replace am, can replace a teacher. And so we take another pronoun, for example, with I, we say he, we say he is a doctor. Now you can notice that I used he in the place of I. So these, you know, two cannot be together in a linear way without a connective. I can't, without a connective, I can't simply say, I, he, a teacher, or I, he is a teacher. No, that's very impossible. So if you have a connector, yes, you can say, he and I. But without it, no. That means he replaces I, or I replaces he in, in a way that is paradigmatic. And the same thing for for am and is. So is is going to replace am. And the word, you know, teacher, which is a noun, which is a complement, is going to be replaced by a doctor. And so the relationship between I am a teacher and he is a doctor is paradigmatic, the paradigm. So we have got the syntam and the paradigm. The syntam is horizontal and the paradigm is vertical. The syntam is linear and complete, and the paradigm is horizontal, is vertical and open. And this is the third dichotomy of uh, dissociere, syntagmatic and paradigmatic relationships. The last dichotomy is about synchronic and diachronic. Now you can notice from the word, you know, synchronic, from the verb to synchronize, so there's a kind of simultaneity, no doubt. Synchronic studies have got to do with the studying of language in a particular period of time. That period is specific. For example, if I studied the Shakespearean English, English at the time of Shakespeare, at that time only, no comparison, nothing, no, no historical um, uh, spanning of, 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 of English at the time, no, no. Only Shakespearean English. That kind of study is synchronic.
because I am studying English at a particular point in time. Now, if I studied the Shakespearean English and the Chaucerian English, or Chaucerian English because Ch Chaucer is before Shakespeare, Chaucerian English and then Shakespearean English, and I try to compare between them, this is not synchronic, it is diachronic because I am studying it historically. I would notice how the Shakespearean English came to be Shakespearean from the period of Chaucer. And so no doubt, English at the time of Chaucer was different to the, to the English of the time of Shakespeare. And now if I studied, if I compare these two Englishes, I shall compare them diachronically. And that, that kind of study is diachronic. It is to study the historical development of language from a particular period in time to another particular period in time. You would say, for example, how English evolved from the time of Chaucer to the time of Shakespeare. Now, for example, another example about synchronic and diachronic, and no doubt Ferdinand de Saussure chose uh, synchronic studies. It is to study a language in a particular point in time. Let's take an example. Let's take the time of Shakespeare and today's English. In the time of Shakespeare, it was very okay, very ordinary to say he has a big house. Now, instead of saying he has a big house, you would say he has a big house. And you omit the S and you put the TH. And that TH is pronounced TH. So at the time of Shakespeare, it was okay to say he has a big house. But now you can notice that we don't say he has, we say he has. And so this study, this kind of comparison between Shakespeare's English or Shakespearean English and today's English is a diachronic study. It is English through history. But if I cared only about English of today, I tried, for example, to compare um, the English of, in Britain and the English language in, in America, that kind of study is synchronic because I am studying English in a particular period of time, like, for example, today's English or contemporary. We call it contemporary English. And that's it. So in today's session, we spoke about the definition of language according to, to De Saussure. And we spoke about the four dichotomies of De Saussure. What are they? We spoke about long and parallel, and we said that De Saussure chose long. We spoke about synchronic and diachronic, and we said that De Saussure chose synchronic study. And we spoke about paradigmatic and syntagmatic, and we spoke about uh, signifier and signified, the two elements of the sign. Thank you so much, and goodbye.